Happy signing day, Bucknutters. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 on Wednesday, February 3rd, 2016. I am Dave Biddle, and I am joined by Steve Hellwagon. Steve, this is always one of the most exciting days of the year, and the Buckeyes have a chance to finish with the number one recruiting class in the country. They're currently sitting at number two, barely behind LSU. Ohio State is waiting on two prospects in particular, Juco offensive tackle Malcolm Prigian and local Columbus standout Malik Harrison from Walnut Ridge High School. I know you're going to be going over to Walnut Ridge to cover Malik Harrison's event today, Steve. Uh, it's going to be a fun day, my man. I'm excited as always. Yeah, no kidding. Like I said, every year in my On the Mark uh, Experts column, it's uh, like opening day in Cincinnati or, you know, uh, how, whatever, the NCAA tournament, just all these other things are just such joyous occasions for sports fans. And I think for college football uh, people, this is the hot stove league, obviously. Here it is winter time, and we're still seven, eight months away from uh, real football action, but we can talk football today. And I tell you what, I, I, I said this to you off the air, I didn't get a full appreciation for how good this class was until I went through and I talked to uh, our buddy Mark Porter with Scouting Ohio and then uh, Barton Simmons and Steve Wilfong uh, from 24-7, and I went through each kid's bio and wrote it for the site, and I'm just awestruck at uh, some of the accomplishments and how good some of these guys can be. Yeah, the only weakness I see in this class, this is pretty obvious, is defensive tackle. Now maybe Malik Barrow will end up being a stud, and who knows, Nick Bosa. I, I think at the very least he'll be able to move inside at times like his brother did, but I look at this class, it's a heck of a class. The only weakness is defensive tackle. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think Malik Barrow is a, is a good player, no question about it, and uh, they, they would have liked. I mean, it wasn't like they didn't try. They tried on Richard Lawrence, the kid who ended up going to LSU. And uh, I'll just make a comment. You, you brought up the, the rankings. I'm not sure Ohio State's going to get that needle mover uh, today, you know, a blue-chip top 100 guy who's going to put them over the top and make them number one. And honestly, um, you know, they won a national championship a, a year year ago without having a number one class in there. So it's not the end-all, be-all being number one, and everybody likes to beat their chest and everything. But uh, And, again, I consider rankings, rankings almost apples to oranges comparisons because class, some classes will have 27 players, some will have 20, and I just don't know how you, you compare that. In, in my mind, Dave, this is how the rankings should be done is weigh the first 20 players in everybody's class and leave it at that because anybody you take uh, after 20 that's rated from 1 to 20, anybody you take 21, 22, 23, 24, you know, those guys are probably just fill-in players anyway. So I think that it should be rated on the first 20 players in everybody's class. I think you'd be amazed how the, uh, the rankings would go um, and, and things would change perhaps a little bit because, as I say, it's, you know, they weigh some of it as an average, but some of it is cumulative as well. And I just, I don't get wrapped up in the rankings. But, yeah, I, I'm excited to see. I mean, this is going to be another top five class. I think it's, uh, I think Meyer had uh, last year was sixth. But uh, otherwise, he's had nothing but top five classes at Ohio State. And this is going to be one of them. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. I did a piece for the site yesterday just looking at how Meyer his classes have finished in the 24-7 sports composite his first five years, including this year, assuming they finish second. Whatever happens this year, they're going to finish at least in the top five. Um, he finished fifth his first year, which was amazing because he had about two months to put that class together. They're ranked in the teens when he took over. He was able to land several top prospects, and they finished with the number five class in the country in 2012. Then his best class was 2013, uh, Super Softs Part 2. Uh, they were ranked as the number two class in the nation. To your point, you don't need to have the number one ranking. That class really was the best class in the country. If they did the rankings over for 2013, the Buckeyes would be ahead of Alabama, in my opinion. Then they were number three the following year. They were number seven last year. So you know life is good when the seventh best class in the country is your weakest link during your tenure. Uh, and then probably going to get the number two class today. So it's been quite a run for Meyer. Fifth, second, third, seventh, 
and second if they stay there today. And it sounds like Malcolm Pridgian and Malik Harrison are a done deal to Ohio State. Now, we're recording this show just before 9 a.m. here on signing day, so by the time the listeners out there hear this show, both those guys could be in this class. Um, but as we're sitting here right now, they have not officially committed yet. But from everything we're hearing, Steve, Malik Harrison is in. Malcolm Pridgian is also in. So those are, that's going to get them to 25. So uh, just speak on those two guys, the, the late additions to the class. Yeah, I think uh, Pridgian uh, fulfills a need, obviously. Uh, he's a guy that, uh, you know, on the line that, uh, you know, they lost so many guys that I think they wanted to add a veteran, a JUCO transfer who could come right in and provide depth in the two deep, if not start. So I think that that, that is probably his role right there. And then uh, Malik Harrison is a very intriguing prospect. He's an athlete, and as I got into what he did, he played primarily quarterback and a little bit at linebacker for Walnut Ridge, and he's got some amazing highlights up there on uh, the Internet uh, from YouTube, different things he's done. Also an outstanding basketball player at Walnut Ridge as well, and I'm excited to go over and meet him and uh, his coach, uh, Coach Maddox, over there at uh, Walnut Ridge. They haven't had an Ohio State signee since Eric Smith, the late, great Eric Smith in 1996. So, And we all know how great he was. <laughs> but I, I say with a laugh because I don't know that he ever – he may have gotten into a game or two here or there. But uh, hopefully uh, the legacy for Willie Carrison will be a little bit better. You know, Ohio State's been a little bit hit or miss with the City League guys. Obviously, Brookhaven uh, had a few guys over the years that were pretty good. But, uh, yeah, it's been kind of spotty, I think, for City League guys, and I'm glad to see one get an opportunity uh, here with Malik Harrison. And uh, he could play wide receiver, he could play safety, he could play linebacker. So a lot of directions he could go. And really, as I talked to Steve Wilfong, that was kind of the, th- the theme of this class, is you've got guys that can go in several different directions. Uh, he pointed out here, Hawkins could play offense or defense. Uh, he said Malik Harrison, if he signs, which, you know, all indications are he is going to sign with Ohio State today over Wisconsin and Indiana. He had canceled visits to Michigan State and Syracuse when it became apparent that uh, he needed to at least privately make a decision with Ohio State. And uh, Steve had also pointed out another player on this list. I'm having a hard time finding him. But, uh, yeah, guys that could just go in a lot of different directions and uh, – you know, one thing we haven't talked about is the wide receivers that they're getting with Austin Mack and Benjamin Victor. I mean, those two guys are both national top 100 players. And uh, we talked off the air. Uh, one of the comments Wolf Fong made was that, uh, you know, they lose Tristan Wallace, a quarterback. They lose Kareem Walker and uh, George Hill, a running back. And yet, you know, they, they landed jelly up. They get Dwayne Haskins, who's a more polished quarterback than Tristan Wallace. And they get Antonio Williams, who I didn't understand how good this guy really was. Almost 8,000 yards in his uh, varsity career with three straight 2,000-yard seasons. Now, you know, that cuts one of both ways. Has he used up all of his miles already in high school? Or is this just a testament to his durability and how great he could be at the college level? I'm going to go, I'm going to go option B on that, Dave. I, I, think, I think he's going to be right in the mix with Michael Weber, Briante Dunn. And they're all going to get carries uh, this coming fall. I love Antonio Williams too. I'm glad you brought that up. His film looks great. Gamer. People have questioned his Gamer. his uh, le- his level. I know he's his level of competition, but then he goes to the All Star game and tears it up. I mean, this kid is the real deal. He, he reminds me of a little bit smaller Carlos Hyde. He's not going to be as big as Carlos Hyde. He's not a doesn't have breakaway yeah, speed, but he will kid. run you over. Yeah, he's got great vision. I, I just love this kid. I think he's better than Kareem Walker. I know people hear that that are, you know, outside and say, oh, that's, that's sour grapes. You lost out on Kareem Walker. Now you're saying Antonio Williams is better. No, I really believe Antonio Williams is better than Kareem Walker. We'll see how that plays out. And then uh, Rashawn Gary, uh, Michigan or Clemson? I think he's going to pick Michigan. The number one player in the country is going to announce today at 1.10. So maybe by 1.30 he'll actually announce. But it's scheduled for 1.10 p.m. Rashawn Gary, defensive tackle. Where do you think he's going to end up, Steve? I would vote Michigan. I think that uh, Harbaugh and his staff have done a great job of trying to, uh, you know, put the put the stakes down in New Jersey, and um, you know that's important. You know, when Michigan has had great teams, it's been a national uh, team with guys, you know, primarily from Ohio, but then uh, you know branching out all across the country. Because there's a limit to how many great players you can get out of the state of Michigan. 
you know, in Michigan State, uh, obviously as strong as it's ever been, coming off the playoff berth in the Big Ten championship, that, you know, and they're going to have probably a top 12 or 13 class. Michigan's going to be uh, anywhere from probably when you move him in there, could be in the top five. So uh, I know they're having a big celebrity event uh, tonight with uh, Derek Jeter and Ric Flair and I don't know who all, but to uh, I think they're trying to to get get some of the onus off of Jim Harbaugh and his very unorthodox recruiting style, including sleepovers and uh, processing here at the eleventh <laughs> hour. But uh, <laughs> two, two controversial two controversial uh, topics that probably will not come up on the red carpet there at Harbor tonight. <laughs> For their, We're for get their the signing day, whatever that is, signing with the stars event. So there you go. Yeah, the one at Ohio State's not going to be quite as star studded, uh, but we will be there. The one star <laughs> that we really care about is Urban Meyer, and he Urban will be Meyer. there. Urban <laughs> Meyer. That's that, that's all the that's all the star we need. He's he's got plenty of star power. We will interview Urban Meyer today at 3 p.m. Again, 3 p.m. today, interview Urban Meyer at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. And after we talk to Coach Meyer, which is always one of the coolest press conferences of the year because it's the first time these coaches can talk about their players on the record. Um, so we're going to chat with Urban Meyer at 3 o'clock. And then after that, we'll chat with Luke Fickle, an absolute all-star recruiter for this staff. And Kerry Combs also does a great job on the recruiting yeah. front. So Urban Meyer at 3 p.m., then throw Luke in. Fickle, Kerry Combs. We will yeah, uh, throw we'll be in there. Uh, I talked with Jerry Emig. We're also going to get Greg Stud Rawa, Coach Stud. So that'll be a, a first as well. I can recall when he proud the saw lines over there in '97. He was a graduate assistant, Mike Jacobs, John Cooper, and now back as a full time uh, assistant 20 years later. And man, he had a decorated career. Uh, helped LSU beat Ohio State in the national championship game and did a great job there. Now he's a Buckeye again. So yeah, I'm excited to talk to Coach Stud later today. Yeah, that'll be cool. We haven't interviewed Coach uh, Stu Drawley yet, so uh, this will be his first uh, interview after taking the job at Ohio State. So that's, I'm glad that uh, SID Jerry Emig was able to add him to the list. That's good news. So, again, 3 o'clock today is the press conference. We will have wall-to-wall coverage. And we have our live thread on Bucknuts right now. Make sure you get on there. Join in on the fun. And it's going to be a fun day, as always. Thanks very much to Steve Hellwagon. Thanks to the listeners out there. Appreciate you guys tuning into the show. Take it away, best damn band in the land. <laughs> Oh, my God.